Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Approximately 20% of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are hormonally functional, meaning they produce a hormone that can be measured and uh, result in a clinical syndrome uh, that can be assessed uh, on exam or, or by history. Examples would be VIPOMA that produces uh, massive amounts of watery diarrhea, uh, glucagonoma that uh, causes an unusual skin rash, diabetes, and uh, weight loss, or insulinoma that results in hypoglycemia. Somatostatin analogs are often the cornerstone of treatment for patients with these hormonal syndromes uh, in the setting of metastatic disease. They're particularly effective at managing VIPomas. Often the syndrome will improve dramatically within the first dose of treatment. They're also very effective at managing glucagonomas. Uh, gastronomas, which causes Olinger-Ellison syndrome, can be effectively palliated with somatostatin analogs, although typically proton inhibitors work very well to control the syndrome as well. The results in insulinoma, uh, metastatic insulinoma, are more mixed. Uh, some people will have a little bit of improvement in their hypoglycemia, but on the other hand, some people can see exacerbation of hypoglycemia with somatostatin analogs. But metastatic insulinomas are extremely rare. They're typically small, relatively benign tumors. A decision about when to start systemic therapy can be often uh, pretty personalized you know, based on patient preference as well as the disease state and wh what we're dealing with. Uh, for sure, patients with evidence of disease progression, that will be a pretty good indication for starting systemic therapy. For other patients who are newly diagnosed, we often look at tumor volume. For patients who are asymptomatic and very low volume disease, and who has a preference to essentially delay therapy, uh, we can certainly cautiously observe these patients. In patients with a heavy tumor burden or symptoms from the disease, I would initiate therapy relatively early. So somatostatin analogs definitely has a role in the management of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. At current time, octreotide is indicated for the treatment of VIPOMA symptoms related to that, so hormone oversecretion. Other type of hormone oversecretion that we sometimes see in this group of tumors also includes high gastrin. Uh, in gastrinomas, the initial therapy often is with proton pump inhibitors. However, in patients who are refractory to proton pump inhibitors or have additional symptoms such as diarrhea uh, with the proton pump inhibitors, octreotide sometimes is also used uh, for that purpose to control the hypersecretion of gastrin. Other uh, type of uh, hormonal syndrome may include glucagon secretion as well as insulin secretion. For glucagon secretion, there's also experts uh, believe there's a role for controlling those symptoms with somatostatin analogs. For insulin hypersecretion or insulinoma, it one has to be a lot more cautious. So occasionally you will see a scenario where the initiation of a somatostatin analog for con controlling insulin hy hypersecretion may lead to the downregulation of counterregulatory hormones. So the hypo hypoglycemia associated sometimes can get even a little bit worse. So if you're gonna use it for that particular purpose, I would actually uh, be very cautious uh, about how you start that particular therapy. With the clarinet study, there's also now data for the use of somatostatin analog for control of tumor growth in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. This is primarily you know, in the situation where a patient has relatively stable disease as it is in the clarinet population. So in this group of uh, situ uh, tumors, in this situation, the use of a somatostatin analog such as lanreotide may delete, uh, delay the uh, disease progression. Somatostatin analogs uh, have been around really for a few decades. Uh, they were initially discovered as a very effective way to control hormone hypersecretion in patients who have neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, and the initial analog that was developed was octreotide. It's been used a very long time for that indication. Uh, more recently, there was a study called the PROMID study uh, in which patients who had carcinoid tumors were randomized to receive either treatment with octreotide or treatment with placebo 
And that study showed that octreotide in that case was able to slow down tumor growth. The most recent study is a study called the Clarinet study. Uh, that's a study that looked at a similar somatostain analog, lanreotide. The Clarinet study uh, included a broad range of neuroendocrine tumors and showed that in this broad range of tumors, uh, lanreotide was able to slow down tumor growth. Uh, so really what we currently think is that uh, both of these somatostain analogs uh, can effectively control symptoms of hormone hypersecretion, uh, and they also control tumor growth. So they're very useful for both reasons. Uh, they differ a little bit. Octreotide is generally given as an IM injection. Lanreotide is given as a deep subcutaneous injection. Uh, we really think that they both work.